my friends. Welcome to the next video update from the backyard of the Red Dragon Growers. I thought I'd start in here to show you what we saved from our summer garden. It's fall now and we did have a busy summer season. We saved a lot of our herbs. I also saved some herbs and I extracted them into some oils here. So I have a lot of different oils and uh, we still have some peppers that we're gonna go see out there. Uh, but we're gonna take you outside to see what we have going on. We have a couple of new projects this year that we did in the summer that kept us busy. So you can see here our beautiful passion flower vine. It took over a little bit, but what we're waiting for, if I can find one, I'll show you. There's one hiding there. There is a passion fruit right there. Uh, there was, oh, there's one down there. There's one hiding there. So we wait for them to fall off to the ground and that's how we know that they're ripe. We're checking on them every day. They are absolutely delicious. I can't wait for them. So that is the, what side? Is that the north side of the garden? We'll start over here in the medicinal garden. We have a valerian root here. This is a new one this year. I'm not gonna harvest this root uh, just yet because it needs another year to grow. It didn't flower. So next year, I'll harvest that root. Uh, and there's our St. John's wart that did very well, although some beetles took over with this and damaged the flowers a little bit. I wasn't able to harvest as much as I wanted to, but I was able to get quite a few transplants from this and I gave them away this year. <clears throat> Here's the vervain. Now this is an absolutely spectacular growing medicinal plant. This plant has so many wonderful health benefits and I've been harvesting this and saving it all year and also drying it out as uh, you know, a dried herb for teas and taking tons and tons of pictures of it. You'll probably see that in one of the previous videos. And coming down this way, I have all of my fall plantings that are soaking in some sunshine here. This is a project that uh, I have in the waiting here. You'll see these are all little maple trees. So every time I find a nice healthy one growing in the garden, I grab it and I uh, give it a little love, put it in a pot and I save it. And uh, actually, since I'm talking about it, I'll bring you over here and show you uh, this is the one I started this year. Right there, you can see it's in that uh, fabric pot. And um, so that one is one that I saved from last year and then I transplanted and it's doing really well. So I use those for shade um, when I need them. I can pick them up and carry them anywhere. And we just recently found these amazing looking, very large pots, you'll see right there. Um, they were only $15 at Sam's. So now I'm using them to contain my mint. You see the mint right there. Uh, that guy likes to spread like crazy. Also, so does the passion fruit. So that is something to consider. That spread itself everywhere, but I'm able to dig that up and transplant it. And I give those away to anyone who wants them. And very curiously here, we have a rebloom on the irises. They, I'll bring you around to see them. They're absolutely gorgeous. Uh, they rebloomed last year as well. They bloomed in the spring and then I cut them back and I refertilized it and it just opened up again. And it looks like the, the bee balm is gonna do the same thing. I cut that back, so we'll go over here. Before we go around to the iris, I'll show you this. This is a new area that I did this year. This originally had cucumbers on it and you know, the cucumbers weren't that successful this year. I did get a couple. I was able to pickle some. But now we have peas and Swiss chard growing in there. And you can see there's a baby doll watermelon hanging on for dear life. I don't know when he's done, but we, we keep checking on him. I assume he's going to fall off, but I got I to gotta look it up 
and see when when it would be a good time to pick that because it should be small it's a tiny one i think it has yellow flesh and uh, i'm new to growing watermelon so i'm learning as i go but we've got some zinnias here on the end and um <clears throat> There's some of our beautiful Swiss chard and rhubarb chard, it looks like is in there as well. And then we've got peas, a couple of different kind of peas. All of these things are cold weather crops, so they're enjoying the cold nights that we've had here in zone 7A, where I am. This is my nice little sitting area with my chimes. Coming around here, been out of control in this area but I'll show you this beautiful iris isn't that beautiful it's nice to see this time of year so the red dragon growers were asked to do a special project for uh, a big party that's coming up and we are growing a lot of lettuce for this party so I wanted to show you our lettuce operations before we get to that we have our little heart garden. I think you saw this in the last video, but you can see here all the herbs have grown in. I put in here, we got a lot of basil. Now, this one here is a uh, red mustard, red tatsoi mustard. It's a little spicy, but it grows like a beautiful plant. It's a little early that I planted it, so it went to flower already. So I have to replant that again because that likes the cold weather. Uh, but that's okay because I have plenty of other lettuces that are growing and uh, we have a row of them here some have flowered but some are still growing and this is where I've been growing my source of all the lettuces that I'm as it gets bigger I take it from here and then we put it over here so this is where we've started so we have many different kinds of lettuce over here we ripped out all of the stuff from the summer except the basil there. We still have some purple basil growing, but in here was tomatoes. So the tomatoes were done and I cleaned it out, refertilized it. And now we have replanting of the things that will grow throughout the winter. So we have carrots, all different kinds of carrots, many different colors. We have turnips uh, over here. This is bib lettuce and we have rhubarb shard, Swiss shard back there. We have spinach, green tatsoi mustard, romaine lettuce, oak, red oak leaf lettuce, a bunch of other carrots back there. We've got onions as well. They just come back every year. As long as I don't dig them up, they'll just keep coming back. I just cut them all back and they're actually growing fast again. And you can see I got some carrots that are ready to go in the ground. And here we've got some kale, scarlet kale. Now that's a hybrid, but that is very hardy and that'll grow all winter into the spring and we'll be able to continuously harvest that. Uh, what else do we have? We have some rosemary and oregano. That comes back every year. That's kind of like my border between the, uh, the gardens here. So and then we have our next area that's being prepared. We just cleaned out all the tomatoes here and uh, we're preparing to then transplant these. They look like they're getting big enough, so we're right at that point. So in this garden here, you'll see that I've got this beautiful plant here. This is okra, red okra, and spineless Clemson okra, I believe, two different kinds. And uh, I've cooked it a bunch of different ways. I tried it, I never had okra. I wanted to grow it because it was a beautiful plant. But I didn't really like it, so then I decided just to leave the these stalks here and leave them grow because it's just beautiful. I love watching it grow. We still have some eggplant left here. It's continuing to grow. And in between there, I've got an evening primrose, which is very nice. That should come back next year, I think, but I'm gonna have to move it. Right here, we still are growing paprika. I'm excited about that because these are just beautiful peppers. Absolutely beautiful and uh, we still have some growth there. So that's exciting. And if I take you around here, you'll see the salvia I planted last year. This year it kind of tripled in size. Looks like our peppers need a little bit of a drink. They look thirsty, but I'll show you the peppers are still going strong. 
We've got a bunch of the hot peppers here in the front that are turning beautifully red. These are the scorpion peppers. Very, very, very hot. Right here, these are called Bishop's Hat or Mad Hatter. And they're sweet and they, they taste really good. And these are a very good producer. They, they've been producing consistently since midsummer and they're, they're continuing to go. Um, some of the peppers have already died off already. Here we have pineapple sage that is just starting to bloom. You can see these red, the red tip flowers here, so beautiful. And over here, you'll see we've got some more of the Mad Hatters and Jimmy Nardellos are down there. The Bulgarian peppers I had, they, they stopped long ago. So they were not a good producer. I may not plant them again next year. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Our zinnias are doing real good. Strawberries are expanding. And then we get to this. Boo hoo here. You may remember in one of the previous videos, this was a nice big standing structure, but our structure collapsed. It was not strong enough. This plant, this is morning glory, but it's also a bunch of other things. I had so many things growing around this, but apparently morning glories, and I also have a moonflower, which is what this is. And then I also have cardinal flower. Uh, so I apparently had way too much growing around it and it wasn't strong enough. So we have redesigned it and I didn't want to tear all this down. I just wanted to let it continue to grow. So there's even a watermelon. So that's just, this is way too much. So I learn as I go. So we, I've redesigned it and we got all the materials. So as soon as this is done for the year, we'll clean it all up, redesign it because I do want to have this as a, a structure to support upwards growth. There's a, quite a few things that I could save space by growing up instead of out like this is all over. I mean, it's, it's taken up a lot of space, but it's beautiful when the, the white flowers are blooming. They're just absolutely gorgeous, but they only stay open for a day. So I'm waiting for the seeds to mature and I found some here. I'll show you what they look like because uh, the moon flowers, you don't get very many of them when you buy them in the seed packet. So I was excited when I saw that the seeds were forming here. So here you go. So in there will be two or three seeds and I have to wait until this turns uh, brown and it dries up, but I'm gonna collect as many as I can because that, it makes a beautiful vine and it grows very well if it's properly supported. So I can also bring you over here. There's another new garden I did this year just to add color and just happiness. Like that's my happy garden <laughs> because it's so colorful, so beautiful. And I have cardinal flower growing up here and I've been collecting the seeds. You'll see these seed pods are turning brown and that's when I collect them. And the hummingbirds and the butterflies and all the birds just absolutely love this. So there's always some kind of activity around this area, always something alive, having fun with that. And uh, over here, I'll show you some of the backup lettuce we have for the, uh, the party. We're growing this in here just to uh, give it the best environment possible in case something happens with the other lettuce that we're growing. And I'll show you the other lettuces we have going on. This video is getting kind of long. I won't, I could go on and on. So I will try to keep it brief, but I do have so much growing here that I'm excited about for the fall because uh, actually I'm more, probably more excited for the fall growing than I am the summer because I get to have more variety of greens that like the cold weather. So here we have bok choy. And I couldn't really grow that bok choy in the summer because it's just too hot. So we have uh, these different ones, uh, green tatsoi, yellow heart winter choy. And I've done a bunch of research to figure out uh, which ones will grow in this area. And also trial and error. You know, some that I think will grow in this area, sometimes don't, and some that I don't think will, will. So it's. It's hit or miss. It's all about 
really experimenting. I've got some rutabaga here. I never grew those before. This is an experiment, but they should grow in the cold weather and some beets. And then here are all of my uh, perennials that I am so excited to plant all over uh, so that I just have flowers that are gonna come up at, like I do, I already have flowers that come up at all times of the year, but I want more. I want more color, more variety. I really want to showcase the different things that will grow in this area. And then right here I have mullen and feverfew to add to the medicinal garden. Both of those uh, herbs I have found to be extremely beneficial, especially the feverfew because I suffer from migraines and feverfew is one of the only natural remedies so far along with butterbur that I have found to be effective for me. So I'm going to add those to the garden and hopefully we'll have some nice growth by the spring. But these are mainly flowers, there are some herbs, there's some fennel there. I also transplanted some thyme, I don't know where that went, that is somewhere. Oh, there's the thyme and some oregano so that I can spread that around. And then we have all this regrowth I had just for, you know, greenery. I had a, a lettuce plant in here and then it dropped its seeds and boom, we've got regrowth. So this was from the spring and now I'm just taking them as they get bigger. So that one right there and that one that's nice and big, I'll transplant that. And that's what these are. These are mostly transplants from things that have regrown from the spring. So that's actually really beautiful that that happens. You can see that happening. Um, Let's see, where did I see that? Like right here. That is a lettuce that is regrowing from the spring. And there I've got some Swiss chard. And these are also some transplants that I'm growing. So when these get big enough, like they are now, I'll be transplanting those into their home for the fall and the, and the winter. Although I do have an abundance. So I'll be giving away a lot of these to anyone who wants to uh, try out some some growing over the fall and the winter. So this video ended up being pretty long, but I will take you over here and then we'll wrap things up. I needed to find a solution for some extra plants that I had and I, oh, there's one of my trees. And I came up with these fabric pots. Um, they worked out for the most part. I was able to uh, put the extra tomatoes and peppers I had in there. And then I was able to just design a walkway and a pathway and you know just have more greenery and continue this you know beautiful I don't even know what you would call it I'm just trying to create the, the best environment I can prettiest with food and uh, you know showcasing what can grow in this area that's another one of those uh, mustard red mustard katsoi mustard the lettuce plants and uh, I just love watching these things grow they make great plants you know I got them around my my hot tub here I also made a screen with plants back there so I can sit in my hot tub in private uh, so this is just showcasing all the possibilities what you can do in your backyard with a little bit of time and effort well that's it for now I hope you're inspired to get out there and get your hands dirty have a wonderful day.